It's the Merex Warping Tips. I want to show you just a few little tips for warping your Merex that I've picked up over the last few years. The first thing is when you're putting it together, don't forget that you need a length of threaded rod to, to come up into the copper pipe that's going to go on top. If you don't have at least three inches here, for example, if your overlap was only an inch or so, your whole loom is going to be unstable. Um, so definitely when you set this up, realize that you need at least three inches under this threaded rod. It's easy not to realize how much threaded rod is up there, and if you don't know, pull the loom apart and look. Another question that I get a lot when starting to warp these looms is, which direction does the warp go after you start? It doesn't matter. So I can start my warp and bring it down and up or I can bring it over the top to start with. Either way works fine. One thing that tends to frustrate people as they're warping, especially if they don't have a bottom spring, is that these bottom warps can get very twisted. I'm very careful when I'm warping to make sure that, first of all, I don't overlap them as I come around the bottom here. I want to make sure that as much as possible, I'm not getting the warps crossed because you're just going to have to uncross them later. It's a lot easier to just put the warp on without crossing. So when I come down here, I'm paying attention that I'm not putting the warp over here. I'm putting it right next to this one. I'm coming up and around. And again, when I come from the bottom, I'm adjusting it, making sure that these aren't crossing. They're just sliding next to each other. Same thing on the top, but the top is a lot easier because you have that spring there to help you out. So on the bottom, making sure they don't cross. It helps to be consistent about which way you go around this bar, just a little bit, um, with how these warps act when you push that bar down. It's not critical though. It doesn't really matter if you mix it up. It's just that it may be a little easier in the long run if you always have the same pattern, either wrapping around the back of the bar or the front of the bar. I tend to just go around the back all the time first. Okay. Then the other thing that I do is I do this little thing where I adjust the warp tension. Mirex recommends that you warp all at once, don't stop all the way across the warp. That is one way to do it, and it's a good way to do it, but I find that a lot of people are not able to warp a whole distance without resting. So I end up stopping myself often, and the last time I tightened, I can feel I was right here. So I basically go, back and tighten, but here's the trick at the bottom. As I'm doing that, I'm making sure these are lining up. I'm even shoving them over a little bit so that I know that this here, here's a loose warp. I want that to be the next one at the bottom and this one gets pulled up and I'm feeling underneath. It's not crossed under there. This will help, although when you push this warping bar down, things will shift again and you'll have to go back and feel under there and get these warps straightened out. So I go through and tighten. Not super, super tight, just even. And then I will keep warping. So already I'm getting an even warp happening, which will hopefully avoid some future problems. So here's a little farther back angle. Um, I'm going to tighten this one more time, that funny tightening thing that I do. And I can sort of feel where I stopped the last time. You have to figure out which way you're going. And then as I go, as you get more slack, 
So I'm pulling, oops, I'm going the wrong way. As I get more slack, I'm making sure down here that I'm not crossing, and I'll even shove those warps over after I tighten them a little bit. Same thing on the top, no crossing. The idea is to get a very even tension, which is not actually that hard on a Murex. It's an excellent loom for tension. But I want to get things nice and even as I put it on. Otherwise, if you put this on haphazardly, you're going to spend a lot of time futzing with it once it's on, or you'll notice some warp tension issues as you weave. That is not as big an issue on the Murex as it is on other looms that don't have such good tensioning devices. Murex is a pretty forgiving loom. So I've tightened it all the way across, and then, I know I stopped about right there, I have a few more inches to warp. So again, you can find this warping pattern in the full-length Murex warping videos. That one I felt pop when I put it on and it's crossed to that other warp. Down the front, around the back, back under. Over the top. And I'll finish warping the rest of this. One other thing that I like to do is to double the salvage warps. I've always done this on all my tapestries, and it's not mandatory, but it is nice to have a doubled salvage warp there to give you a little extra um, firmness on the sides of your tapestry. One other thing that might be helpful for some of you, this is another thing that I don't actually do, but um, many tapestry weavers do, is add a guide string on the edge. That's just um, an extra warp that you don't weave, and it gives you a gauge for whether you're pushing out or drawing in immediately. You don't have to measure it, you can just see, oh my gosh, I've drawn in a half an inch over here because my guide string has a big gap. Um, I would suggest using um, a warp of a different color or maybe just um, a piece of strong cotton, something that's a different color or maybe um, coloring the warp that's on the edge. I happen to have this same warp in blue. So you just add an extra warp here to give us that visual on the edge. I'm going to leave myself some room for a knot, tie it off, and I'm trying to get it um, a similar tightness to the rest of the warp. And then I just do a, I do that by doing a half hitch knot. You can use a square knot if you have not been able to figure out the half hitch. The advantage to the half hitch is that it slides and I can tighten it to the same tightness as the rest of the warp. So this blue warp on the edge I will not weave. I will just leave it floating and my salvage will be on this doubled warp here. I'm going to put one more on the other side. Okay, now we've gotten the warp on nice and evenly. We need to move this warping bar down. At this point the warp is holding the warping bar so we can move these clips out of the way. You want to loosen your tension just a bit and then simply take this bar and push it all the way down to the bottom. It can go right down even with this back bar. Tighten up. And this is where I'm looking for even. So we did a pretty good job getting this on. I'm not feeling a lot of crossed warps under there, but I want to go through and make sure that things are pretty even. And I feel underneath, and I kind of uncross if there's any that are horribly crossed underneath. I 
and make sure that those are even. So what I'm doing is looking at, I'm feeling under here to see if these are crossed. And it looks like there's just a couple here. You could also lay your loom down like this and fix them. This is not hugely critical, especially a warp like this one I just put on is pretty good. So a few little crosses, you're never going to know the difference. If these are all screwed up, then you might want to spend just a little time uncrossing them because it could maybe affect your tension somewhat. But once it gets down this way, we can um, make sure all our ends are even. Make sure the width at the bottom is the same as at the top. This is an 8 inch warp, so I want, an, I want to get 8 inches down here. Also, if anything, I would go just a little bit wider on the bottom. Don't go narrower because you're much more liable to pull in than push out at the start. And then I'm just going to space all these little warps. And I am ready to put my header in just as soon as I get the heddles on. One of the biggest problems I hear people have um, with the Merex loom is getting the heddles on in the right order. It's very frustrating to do a whole line of heddles and then figure out that somewhere in the middle you've screwed up and you have to take it off. What's even worse is if you don't realize you've screwed up until you've done the second half of the bar and then you have to take off both sides. I think largely it's a visual perceptual problem. It's it's hard to see exactly which warp you need to pick up next and as we get older our vision gets worse. Um, and so let's see what happens if I do this. I think right away if you put a piece of paper and block the second layer of warps you've made a huge improvement in, in seeing where each of these warps are. If that isn't enough you can take a rod or a ruler or something and pick up each of the warps that you're going to use. You could use the little rod that comes with the Mirex that um, slides into the top spring. So for example, what if I just do part of these, but for my first row, say I want this particular set in the heddles. Remember this blue is a guide string and we're not going to put it in any heddle at all. So now you can see that I've picked up every other one and I could start putting the heddles on here and just go right along and pick up those ones that are popped forward. If that isn't enough of a change for you, if you're persistent enough that you're going to go through and pick up that warp that's back behind, use something thicker. Use a ruler or a shed stick that you can turn on its side. You could use something like this shed stick. This is um, one that Jim Hokett makes, but you could use any kind of stick. You could use a dowel. A ruler would work well. Um, if you're going to use something that's, that's um, fairly wide and stretches the warp when you turn it, you might want to loosen your tension a little bit, but see, this gives me even a better perception of what the next warp is going to be. So I've got these two. Here's my next one. Going through and pulling up each warp that way really helps you from making that mistake where you go over two warps instead of skipping just one, you skip two. That's a mistake that can't be fixed except by taking the heddles off. So try it this way. See if it helps. Now I've got the first entire row of heddles on and before you flip this bar around and do the other side, pull it forward and check. Make sure you really did get every other heddle on this is a good time to save yourself at least some work. If you messed one up, you can just pull out this side. If you turn it to the other side and there's a mistake on this side, you're going to have to take everything out. It looks like I got them all on correctly. 
The other thing about Marex Huddles is these little tufts of um, Texolve, you want them pointing straight towards you like this. You don't want them twisted back here because they actually can catch on each other and give you um, shedding problems. You'll see you have floats in a certain part and it might be that your heddles are catching. So you want to make sure as you put them on that those little tufts are coming straight towards you. So now I'm ready to flip this bar over and do the heddles on the other side. So I've got my Mirex all warped up and ready to go. I can take this black shield out and actually I'm probably going to use it down here because another good tip for weaving on a Mirex is to block from your view this back layer of warps. It'll help a lot. I'm going to put in a stretcher string and a header and I'm ready to weave.